Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian if you happen to be new and I've been away from Final Fantasy 14 for over the last 18 months and it has honestly been the best choice that I've made both for myself and my health and overall just enjoyment of video games. If you guys are curious, I'm down over 70 pounds and I still got a little bit to go before I can officially step back into the game. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see when that kind of falls. <laughs> Hopefully this year, if I, if I can use, use, lose the rest of the weight here this year, I think it's gonna be great. But today there is an interview from Yoshi P himself translated by the Reddit community. Thank you so much Reddit for doing this incredible work. I'll include a link in the description for you guys if you just wanna go read this for yourself. But there's a big takeaway here that I wanna kind of call out one that I've been calling out for a long time, and I'm gonna highlight a couple of other opinions, especially about the state of Final Fantasy 14 in this video as well. So thanks guys for being here, let's dive in. Here is the key takeaway. Yoshi P regrets over making Final Fantasy 14 less stressful. Now, while reflecting during the fan fest, and so from now on, they're going to keep working to surprise players and go beyond what they can imagine. But it does remind him them of something that he regrets. As they've continued to operate 14, they've made the game more comfortable, a game that you can play without stress. But looking back over the last 10 years, we think we might have overdone that just a little bit. And that I think is a real important takeaway and something that I am excited to hear. My biggest critiques of Final Fantasy XIV have been that they've really shifted to MM optional, massively multiplayer optional. And that's why from their content offering, I think you saw a lot of frustration, a lot of burnout from content creators, but also from the player base that have been with the game for a long time. New players don't experience it. And so you end up having a friction gap between players who are new to the game, just stepping in like the Xbox players now and not understanding that for players who have been here every cycle, every expansion, yeah, the game has progressively gotten easier to the point where I think that ends up going what happened to the fun because there is some kind of relationship between this kind of difficulty. And he continues on in the interview because he's asked, what do you mean? And Yoshi P says, a game should have, of course, have some elements of stress, but it's how you handle that properly that is extremely difficult. And he goes on to talk about a side-scrolling game where if there weren't any holes that you could drop down and fall into, if you miss a jump, of course, the game would lose all of its stress, but it would also lose its fun. And this is, I think, really, I, I have a lot of hopium right now in this case for what this could possibly mean. We know an exploratory zone is coming in the form of Dawn Trail. And there were also, I'm seeing rumors and in, in interviews talking about letting players kind of start the story from patch 6.1. I, I don't know if that's going to require a financial investment in a jump potion, but that is what has been the strategy so far in the new game plus for those of who uh, who you've taken that option is an always a way to go back and experience the story as well. But all that being said is the MMO has like elements of Final Fantasy 14 have clearly taken a back seat. Players like to sit here and say like, it keeps it simple. They, they like that simple approach and that's perfectly fine. But the players who don't want to take breaks, who don't want to step away, the game is telling them they should stop playing. And that's exactly what Yoshi P has been saying for a long time. But I think what he is reflecting on here is that he is maybe over committed to that aspect because when I step back into Final Fantasy 14, I'm at no disadvantage to those who have invested their time and continue to play the game. And I think that's, you know, nice for a returning player but for players who really want to have things to chase and really want you know, to go and do interesting things in the game, uh, there is a vast lack of that. Now, who knows if the exploratory zone uh, that is going to be included is kind of what he's talking about here. Maybe a return to Eureka, you know, kind of style content, which is one of the things that you see people continuing to do, go into Eureka or go into kind of older content, make their own challenges, which is exciting uh, to see in the long run. But. The interview also then goes on to talk about his next game 
and he intends to be the director, but it has nothing has yet to be decided. Uh, obviously, the organization, as large as it is, is uh, at its scale, uh, is a challenging aspect. And when we think about that, this is one of the, I want to highlight this option here for everybody because this also is a reflection of things will be slow to change. The bigger your ship, the bigger your organization, the slower things kind of get implemented. So generally speaking, the strength of Yoshi P and his project management and his skill set is pushing that bar forward, continuing to have that consistent delivery. Uh, but hopefully it goes back to the very start of what he's talking about with trying to really surprise and delight and go beyond what players can imagine. But I wanna highlight a couple things here. First and foremost, we got a tweet. Uh, and this is uh, something that I'm gonna kind of have a rebuttal to this tweet in and of itself, but we can kind of start off here. It says, before anyone says Final Fantasy 16 took time from the 14 dev team, 16 development started in 2016 with Yoshi P leading it, and it was during Stormblood. If you were to believe people blaming 16 for Endwalker's lack of content, we would have seen it earlier, Expansions Brother. Now, this is actually false. This individual doesn't know what they're talking about. Also, people complained about Stormblood. Stormblood was also a little bit lacking. They finished it off in Endwalker. I mean, they finished it off in Stormblood. Now, they finished it off in Shadowbringers. All right, <laughs> we got it in three. Um, they finished it off in Shadowbringers, and so it ended up being that that's the case. Retrospectively, for players who are playing through all of it, it does feel way more fleshed out. But this, yeah, them making this argument as actually uh, it's white, like whitewashing or uh, re revisionist history what was going on back in then because these complaints are new. Now, Jesse Cox replies to this. He says, Endwalker, quote unquote, lack content because they had to wrap up a 10 year story. This is true. Tie up those loose end story threads. This is the end of the expansion cycle. People got bored because the thing ended and that's on them. Everyone will be fine. Come Dawn Trail, mark my words. Now, well, that's why I bookmarked it because we will, we will mark those words. And the rebuttal to it, I thought was actually well put by Fusion. Let me pull this up here. Fusion X is on a break. He's frustrated. He's been frustrated with Final Fantasy 14 for a while, but he says, friendly reminder to the, it's just the patch cycle burnout people. It's all of a, uh, not all of us like 14 and Walker. Some of us have been bored for two years, if not, you know, not two months. For some, it's more than burnout. It's two years of disappointment, something that's been even harder to reconcile and it sucks. So when it's all said and done, like everybody can, you know, your view on 14, whether it's good, bad, mixed, uh, you know, like you're not wrong. Like your view is your view. But the point here is that this has been kind of a process that we've seen happen over the course of Final Fantasy 14's time. And I'm hopeful based off of Yoshi P's words that this means that they're going to make a bigger investment into the MMO elements and my personal preference while outrageous let's you know because what I want the game to be is an unfair thing because what I want is more Final Fantasy 11 elements brought into this sand park as opposed to a theme park or a sandbox a blending of these systems and I think 14 would be a really interesting test case to see them as they work on this next 10 years bring in some of those elements things like conquest now you might be saying it conquest doesn't translate directly into Final Fantasy 14's lore and I agree however just the open world na nature that we've seen with Eureka and Boja brought into the actual open world and then you bring in trusts to marry and offset the single player nature that is the story. There's a lot of little, I think, little tweaks, a lot of easy wins that the 14 development team can uh, can make. And I've continued to provide those, uh, those uh, you know, while I was playing. I haven't provided them over the last 18 months because I've been completely away from the game. And uh, that's, again, I think been probably the best, you know, best for my health and best for my enjoyment. But the point I'm trying to make here is that there is a lot of potential still within the framework of Final Fantasy 14. Back to the conquest idea, like imagine if it was just your like free company or uh, your grand company, uh, just overall not owning, 
but being responsible for the zone by PvE elements, meaning uh, in Final Fantasy XI, by fighting monsters in the open world, and I would say in the dungeons that are attached to them, you earn points for your grand company and maybe your free company. And then every week is just a little bit of a bragging rights of like, hey, the great, you know, the adders did more in this zone over the last week. Isn't that neat? Maybe they get reduced teleport costs to any of the Aetherites in that area for that week or something simple like that. It doesn't have to be grandiose, but some asynchronous multiplayer that really kind of highlights that we're all playing this game together. Now, I would go above and beyond and want to see a player driven economy really be inserted into the game. I'd want to see uh, gear and uh, different options being brought in. And the, the system that I proposed just as a thought, you know, experiment would be to see them add in the like various traits to the relics uh, and then those traits would only be applicable in things like Deep Dungeon and things like Eureka and Bajja, where it, they would not be active, obviously, during the raid. So the ARR relic could make your build interesting. Uh, and so you want to go farm that relic, and then you can take that relic into different contents and benefit from that investment while not being required and not being the raid you know requirement to be able to be a part of the raids because the traits wouldn't apply in pieces of content i think that would be an interesting use of the relics that they have and the systems that they have that goes beyond just glamour and fashion and i think that's where we see friction within the final fantasy 14 community anyway you know it's it should be there is a level and you know from a business perspective that you want to make it comfy that you want to make it easy to step into it but when you have those players it sucks to be told to go play something else when you don't want to and i think if yoshi p can kind of address some of that with contents he doesn't have to over you know redo the entire game but with those contents and we've seen them kind of experiment with some of the stuff in the past i think that would be really thrilling and don trail could be a really good opportunity to introduce those systems at its core so starting players can experience them and so much more but i'd love to hear what you guys think about this interview and your thoughts there sound off in the comments we can have that discussion but for the channel <laughs> ginger prime love loves mmos thank you so much for being here hopefully you enjoy and hopefully you have a wonderful day but until then take care